What's up guys, Jacob from Killertech, and we are back with another Tech Talking Podcast, and we are late uh, on the second episode, which is kind of embarrassing. Um, we because kind of, you slept too long yesterday. Yeah, it was kind of uh, my fault. I mean, Easter, chocolate, sleep, that's my kind of plan for Easter Sunday, and uh, the podcast didn't really fit into that plan, unfortunately, but we are late, but still here, which is good, and we have a load of topics lined up, so I guess we should get right into them yeah yeah maybe 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 not um right first thing i guess we could talk about is i have some new video ideas which i just want to quickly point out yep. um before we start the podcast properly and that is firstly that i was planning on doing a big big kind of like upgrade um in the next couple of months but i've decided i'm going to start ordering parts kind of uh, drip feed ordering them like over a so period of you time. So what are you going to order first? Most likely um, the Noctua cooler, um, yeah. which I will order first. And I'm just going to kind of do that so that instead of having them all at once and making a load of videos at once, I can kind of spread the videos out and make some interesting content uh, that is going to spread out instead of all in one big kind of bulk. Uh, so yeah, that's just one thing I wanted to let you guys know about. And yeah, should we get on with the first topic? How about some gaming disappointments? Yeah, let's let's just kick this off with some gaming. Uh, was it no? Two two days ago, we talked to one of our Battlefield friends. Uh, his name is Jens, and he had been like, he didn't want to try Battlefield Hardline, and when he tried it, he was really fucking pissed when we asked him about it. Like, yeah, he had such a bad time with it. Uh, because there's a lot of bugs. Um, spawning is really messed up, apparently, as well as gun balance. A lot of guns are OP, a lot of guns really suck. So, I think I'm at the very least holding off getting Battlefield Hardline until yeah. I've heard further from him. Um, I think pissed was an understatement. He was absolutely... Like mad. Yeah, like... Breaching, like, being put in a padded room. He was, like, really <laughs> annoyed. Uh, I think the fact that he bought premium with it didn't exactly make things yeah, better. Yeah, it was, like, 80 euros he spent on it, and he he did not like it. But yeah, yeah, I think it's safe to say that um, he won't be playing that for a while. Um, and, I mean, they, were ev they even said they would wait uh, with releasing it. Uh, I think they took a couple of months extra to make it mm. even better. But apparently that's fucked up as well. I mean, I think he Just uninstalled it. Just bad things. <laughs> In the first day, yeah. he installed it and uninstalled it. Because I spoke to him later and he said he'd um, uninstalled it. So, yeah. yeah. So um, I'm guessing Battlefield Hardline would be this week's gaming disappointment. <laughs> yeah. Although I've spoke to some people that seem to really enjoy it. but um, I mean, we enjoyed the beta. Yeah, the beta was We mostly played awesome. Hotwire. He is kind of... A team deathmatch player. Mm. I think maybe that's why the messed up spawns can be quite annoying, and I think it's easier probably to notice the gun balancing, especially when you're doing team deathmatch and it's just constant ba gun battles. So something he mentioned about the spawns. I heard about it on YouTube, but apparently he was looking at one corner of the map. He turned around. Next second, there was four guys there shooting at him. <laughs> that is not good spawns. I mean, that's even worse than Battlefield 4, and I was pretty pissed at those spawns. Yeah, like it was so easy to spawn trap people. It's not just like he's a bad player either, because he is very good actually. Um, yeah. Because some people can just get pissed and complain about the game when really they're not very good, but this guy is definitely probably one of the best players I know that plays Battlefield. So, yeah, I'm not sure that's um, the reason he's getting annoyed. But anyway, I think we should probably move on to some graphics card talk because there has been a little bit of a development um, in the last couple of weeks. So Should we rapid fire the topics or just go here, there? Um, I'm, I'm going to start. The 980 Ti. So last week we said that uh, it was going to be 10% faster than the Titan X. Yep. But the Titan X is a fully unlocked GM200, I believe. Uh, I have my cheat sheet over here. Yeah, GM200 um, uh, chip. Yep. So the the 980 you can't you can't build it any further. So it's not going to be faster unless like they really man up the overclocking, which is already beast on the Titan. 
So it's basically a Titan X with six gigabyte of VRAM. I just hope that there's going to be like some decent coolers um, that come with this card. I think if if they are if there are some decent coolers and some of the companies like MSI, AIO cooler. Hmm, if they like if MSI um, really step up um, and make some decent coolers, um, have their cards shipped already with an overclock, then this card hopefully will still be good. Um, so yeah, I just hope that they do that. Um, and I heard it. It would come in maybe about seven hundred dollars. It's still quite a bit, but compared to to the Titan X, and the only difference being the VRAM. I think it was too early to be leaked because now people are going to hold back buying the Titan X. Not really mm. anything good about that. But talking about the Titan X, yeah, Jacob, we um. were also talking about hybrid coolers. Yes. So uh, just before we move on to that, just to let you guys know, <laughs> um, the, we, there isn't a whole article here about the um, 980 Ti. If you guys want to check that out, it will be in the description. So, yeah, Titan X uh, coolers. Yeah, so uh, NVIDIA will release, apparently, a uh, GTX Titan X Ultra. Ooh. And it basically comes with uh, a hybrid AIO cooler, a all-in-one liquid cooler. And um, apparently, the only difference from the normal Titan X is the all-in-one liquid cooler, mm. and that it might ship with that unlocked BIOS I talked about last week. So, amazing overclocks, maybe. Mm. What do you think, Jacob? Do you think we're going to see amazing overclocking records on the Titan X? On the Ultra, possibly. Yeah. Ultra, um, of course. As long as it ships with a decent cooler, then yeah. Um, but. I think on the um, standard um, uh, NVIDIA edition, probably not. I'm guessing mm. it's probably not going to be as good as, of course, if you get a card that's got a really nice um, cooler. So I'm just. But the all-in-one cooler, of course. Yeah, yeah. The all-in-one cooler, though, definitely. So it's going um, to be really silent, uh, quiet. Um, oh, yes. <laughs> yes. That's because look, cooling graphics can't, they just fit together really well. Yeah, that, I think uh, that's one definite advantage of having um, an all-in-one cooled card. Compared to having like a reference design, it's got that one little crappy fan on, which is okay, but once you start overclocking, that thing is very noisy. Um, and I think a lot of the cards that are designed like that do get kind of noisy, um, from yeah. what I've seen, anyway. Um, but, yeah, so... I don't think the Titan X itself had a backplate like the 980 and the 970 uh, reference, of course. Um, so that's a bit of a shame. Yeah. I don't think it will be on the liquid cooled either. It might change. Well, there's like not really much leaked picture pictures. Wow, well, English failing. Um, we'll see. Um, yeah. When is it going to be released? I'm guessing it will uh, be soon. Yeah. Um, I don't I, really know. <laughs> maybe they uh, they haven't said a definite date, but I'm guessing it will be round about in the next, um, probably in the next couple of, maybe the, a month at the most, maybe slightly longer. Um, and also, uh, they're probably going to speed up uh, when they release this, because they probably want to kind of time it right compared to AMD's releases um, to try and beat them in the sales market. Um which, I mean, who knows? I mean, if the oh, yeah, 390 think, is good... I think it even said that it was uh, accounted to the 390X. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, I see that right there. Um, so, possibly when AMD releases their uh, 390X, which is mm. probably also going to be liquid-cooled, um, yeah, most likely. they will release their Titan X Ultra. I just hope that all these cards have backplates. I think... Yeah. In this market at the moment, if you don't include a backplate, it's kind of a sorry state of affairs. Because you, I mean, I if I get a card now, I'm going to want to buy I mean, a even, backplate. Even the 960 has a backplate. A yeah. lot of the 960s has backplates. Mm -hmm. uh, my 970 doesn't have it. Just a second, the cat wants to come in the window. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah. In fact, actually, looking at my case now um, and my card... My 290 does not have a backplate, um, and that's one thing that I think is a real shame. I think, especially if um, the uh, producers say that they're going to um, include a backplate, it's definitely something that sweetens the deal for me. Um, without a backplate, it's kind of um, hmm, 
I don't know, it just makes the card look untidy. I think visually the backplate um, is a really big deal to me, and especially structurally, I think having a backplate um, is definitely going to be something that's going to keep the card um, a little bit more secure and stop it from flexing, which of course isn't a very good thing for a graphics card to do. Yep, so I'm back, and just probably the last graphics card um, new yep. news is uh, a white GTX 970. Yeah. And cat needs emergency again, yeah, just the same. Asus, <laughs> Asus is releasing a GeForce GTX 970 Turbo, and it has a white shroud and a higher boost clock of... Uh, 1228 yep. uh, megahertz. <sighs> wow. I don't know. I think it looks absolutely it's crazy yeah. bad. It, it looks like a plastic shroud. Um, mm. It looks a bit tacky in this picture, but that's yeah. maybe just because it's more And if a... it doesn't have a backplate... Mm. Yes. I don't know. Oh, that's I think the cooling will probably be around uh, the same as um, the cheap plastic shroud coolers. Yeah, um, I'm not expecting um, much from this. I mean, it looks so visually probably looks won't good. Be, probably won't be silent, but it's more like faced towards uh, people who want a pretty looking PC. Yeah, I think visually it it could look good when um, if you're rocking a delight uh, a delight motherboard uh, d a deluxe he motherboard <laughs> <laughs> a deluxe uh, motherboard uh, one of those would look really nice with this. Um, I think that'd be alright, and I think also um, the white and red is definitely a good colour scheme um, inside a PC to go white with. White and red, I don't know. I think they should have gone for full white, but also in the metal shroud, instead mm. of just plain plastic. Yeah, um, but uh, I mean, it's just more of a visual thing, really. Um, it, the whole thing came, seems just not very nice, like the way it's been designed. Um, I'm guessing it's just maybe because that's not a picture of the actual card, but just a picture of the design. Yes, I mean, they often create most of these designs, like, this could be something they've created on a computer, um, just as a idea of what it's going to look like, so, I mean, it's, and by the way, you guys can check out this um, card if you want to, there will be a link in the description. Uh, are you possibly recording the website? No, I am not. I can actually well, drag it there's into a funny view. Well, there's a funny picture uh, in the comments. <laughs> well, I'm just going to drag it into uh, view. If, if you go into the comments... Like right. low yep. on the side, you know it had the problem with the four gigabytes. Uh, oh, somebody put some the kind picture. of. Do you see the picture? Oh yes, yeah, I see the picture. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's just genius. <laughs> oh. Yeah. That. <laughs> that Photoshop. Interesting. <laughs> of course, it's going to have the same issues as all other 970s, but. Like so far, it hasn't affected me. That only 3.5 gigabytes is running full speed, mm. and that's it. So, do you want to talk about something else? Yes, uh, I think we should probably move on from graphics cards. I think yes, we have talked definitely. about graphics cards for way too long. Right, I'm just scrolling down through the topics now. Um, we could cover Windows 10 um, just to give yeah. things a bit of a change. Um, and neither of us, neither of us um, have any experience with Windows 10. I have so. no experience, but I've seen some. Um, in the beginning, like a month ago or so, yep. probably two, um, it didn't look that different. It had multiple, uh, what you'd call it, desktops, like mm -hmm. virtual desktops. Yeah, I've seen that. That was really cool, mm. but it didn't split up like, uh, you know, the uh, line in the bottom of your monitor. What is that called? Um, I'm guessing, uh, are you talking about the Windows start toolbar? Bar? Uh, toolbar. The toolbar, yeah, the toolbar. Yeah. Um, that kind of just counts for all of the desktops, unfortunately. So if you want mm. to open a Chrome window about NVIDIA graphics card on one page, mm. and then about uh, AMD graphics card on another page, mm. you can't actually just manage that from that one toolbar. The toolbar counts for everything, not each desktop that I would have liked. Yeah, I'm not really sure. It's that a bit of a shame mm. because that would really be good for multitasking. I'm hoping they would change that because it is a technical preview. But also, mm. like, I don't think it feels much different from Windows 8. 
Yeah, from what I saw, it didn't really... I mean, to be honest, Windows 8 wasn't that different from Windows 7 when I think back. I mean, all they pretty much added was the Windows... Um, start menu. Whatever you want to call that. Yeah, the start menu. I mean, that was basically Metro it. Metro UI, I guess you call it. Also, yeah, it seemed a bit smoothed down. I think just the way that Windows 8 is just seems to be a little bit kind of smoothed off compared to Windows 7. I think just everything looks a bit nicer. Um, c like, to me, yeah, anyway. More modern. Yeah, I guess you could say. Yeah, and I'm. I think that's probably just because I'm used, like, used to wi like using Windows Seven for so long, um, which probably didn't help. But I think Windows Ten is basically the same. It's kind of a bit of a spru. I think they've got rid of the whole uh, Windows Start thing, haven't they? And they've kind of made um, some kind of different thing that's a bit it's smaller, I believe. If if you could imagine Windows Seven and Windows Eight having a child, that's kind of that start menu. So it's. Yeah. It doesn't cover the entire screen unless you want it to. Um, there's a button in the upper right corner of the start thing. Yep. Uh, and you still have the same options as Windows 7 um, in the side. But something I noticed when using that, I couldn't set programs there. It would automatically put programs there. Um. They think it's smart, but I want control. I don't want you to think I use Internet Explorer's Project Spartan, whatever. We're going to talk about that later, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Um, give us control. That's what we want. Mm. I think the whole multi-desktop... I'm not that keen on the multi-desktop idea. I think I like it. I, I understand why it's good for... like. I think somebody uh, once suggested things like having two desktops, one of them for play, the other for work, so you can come home you can do your work on one desktop and then you can do whatever you else you do yep, like watching films and browsing on the third desktop i mean yeah porn on one desktop um and work on the other perfect hiding porn yeah yeah that's that's <laughs> basically windows 10 there you go if you want high yes. porn windows 10 um i think the free upgrade as well is a really good thing for this but it actually this includes a lot of versions they were all like every version of windows mm. I have a slightly different version. I actually have the enterprise version of Windows because I have it. Um, and the Windows 10 upgrade does not count with that. Oh, really? Yes. That's so a... I'm actually forced to get another operating system to well, get Windows 10. In all fairness, though, I think I'm, I'm downgrading to Windows 7. I'm Excellent. pretty sure that you did get your Windows 8 from, let's just call it an illegitimate source. Probably. <laughs> but it w it was cheaper. Way cheaper. Yeah, <laughs> yeah cheaper. Um, wait, did you just say that you're possibly thinking going, of going back to Windows 7? Yes, because uh, yeah, I want to try it again, actually. You mad? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know. It might be acceptable to do that. I mean... Windows 10 just looks like a more polished version of Windows 8, to be honest. So that's probably why I'll um, upgrade to it. I just hope that upgrading it's not kind of too harsh on... Um, like, I, ho I just hope that they simplify it to the point that you can upgrade and it's not going to alter things too much. Yep. Like, I would be happy if they just make the upgrade simple so that I can just do it and then not have to worry about files being put in different places, like them like rearranging my desktop to the point that I have to like reconstruct it and things like that. Just so that it's easy to upgrade and it's not just like doing a refresh, which is something I really don't want to do, uh, at least not at the moment. So, oh yeah, well, yeah. If, if you got Windows 10, you actually would <laughs> have to uh, reinstall the Windows system, which you haven't done at all yet. No. I'm like, <laughs> okay, reinstall all the Windows! And you just like, well, you Bleh. do it a lot, like compared to me, like. I just did it on my laptop and I'm doing it soon on my desktop. I mean, my laptop, it was because it wasn't working. Um, mm. I think it's the sheer amount of games that I've got that just really... I mean, at the moment, I must have about, well, like, 70 games installed. and <laughs> I mean, It probably would help, because I think if I uninstalled it, a lot of the games wouldn't get reinstalled, because I don't play a lot of them anymore, but still, I, I don't know. We are getting slightly off track now, I think. Yes. Should we continue? Last uh, point of Windows 10 is Project Spartan. From what I can yeah. see, it's like Internet Explorer, but where you can actually take notes um, oh. instead. Uh, it's kind of like you can draw on a website, but the links wouldn't work. Mm. So if you take a screenshot yeah. of that exact page you have open right now, and then draw a penis on it. 
and save it. Th that's basically it. You can't click on any links. Um, mm. Or maybe like take notes on it. I actually haven't heard of this. Um, this is actually the first I've heard of this, to be honest. I mean, I've not really looked into Windows 10 that much, um, like ever since it's kind of been announced. Um, uh, firstly, I'm going to say the I don't like the name. The name sounds like some kind of code word for a, I don't know, something horrible. Um, this is Sparta. Yeah, it it kind of sounds like I don't know they're breeding some kind of mutant soldier or something. It doesn't sound like no. what it actually is. <laughs> but I think maybe this has potential, maybe not. Um, I guess it just depends how they do it, and nobody will really know that until it's launched. Um, in fact, is there actually it can is it actually accessible yet, or is that still in yeah, development? It is. It is. Uh, right. Okay. So, but it's a preview, of course. So yeah. So continue. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Let's just continue. We, we were kind of getting stuck into Windows 10. Yeah, Windows 10 is not something that I think we should go into too much detail about because it's kind of a lot to cover. Um, yes. Maybe move on to some game talk. Um, yeah. You started. So, Star Wars Battlefront, uh, the next DICE game, um, something that hopefully will um, wipe away the tears of um, Hardline, well, for the moment anyway. Um, hopefully this, I'm, I'm actually really looking forward to this as I played uh, a lot of the old Star Wars Battlefront games on, what was it, PS2? Must have been, and I think... I played Lego Star Wars. Oh, well, <laughs> I, played, like, I played everything Star Wars. I think Star Wars is... Honestly, one of my favorite movies of all time. I haven't watched it, it never for... never really caught me, to be honest. I kind of... I don't know. I mean, like, Star Wars Lego. Just, e like... I, c I even bought Star Wars Lego, like, at home. Honestly, Star Wars is one of my favorite films of all time. It's the kind of film that I grew up watching and kind of... I'm guessing you will most likely get the game. Yeah. But will it be good? Will it be EA fucking us over again? Who knows? I mean, it's... I mean, they are already... Preparing a game right after Hardline launch. Yeah. And Hardline didn't go as planned. Although I get the I feeling wonder how this will. This may have been in development for a while. Um, I think this is kind of one of the games that they kind of have a smaller team working on constantly for a couple of years instead of just pumping out a game each year. Well, not yeah. every year, but so I mean it could be good. I I can tell you now I'm not pre-ordering it. I think pre-ordering is That's something. That's pre-ordering any game. Nobody at this should. Point ever ever pre-order a game especially on pc because i mean on console things are kind of guaranteed to be okay but i think with pc things can just be shit and then people aren't going to do anything about it <coughs> ubisoft uh but so yeah um don't pre-order any games EA. <laughs> yeah ea's got a pretty bad reputation as well but i think pre-ordering games point. is definitely a bad idea um yeah so yeah uh talking about pre-ordering if you have pre-ordered GTA 5 you will be able to preload it tomorrow the 7th of April yes um, I, think I don't <laughs> know oh yeah it even says uh, through Rockstar Warehouse and Steam so you will be able to get it from Steam I'm just going to oh another link by the way will be in the description I'm trying to all links will be in the description <laughs> I should have just said that at the start instead of like trying to say every single topic um, yeah I think there's actually some of these these are um, shots from the actual game, aren't they? Yeah. I looked through these a while ago. I mean, whether this ap actually is going to be like what it's going to be like. Um, hmm. Hopefully they don't pull a Ubisoft. <laughs> yeah. That's like the ultimate, like, muck up uh, catchphrase now. Don't pull a Ubisoft. Yeah. Because we know it's going to be shit if they do that. But, eh, it looks okay. Um but yeah, I think uh, the pre-install is really good. I mean, I think this is... Uh, I did see, I think it's 65 you, you gigabytes. Don't, yeah, 65 gigabytes. And you have a really bad connection. Is it going uh, a little bit... Uh, so, like, someone like you, I think you have maybe half a megabyte per second uh, or something. I, I don't remember, to be honest. Yeah, I don't it either. It would probably be a good idea to preload as well as the servers are going to be stressed as soon as it launches. I mean, yeah. even the pre-order is going to download with really low speed. By the way, internet because upgrade. Everyone is going to try it, uh, try and pre-load uh, it. That's the one thing I need to do now is upgrade my internet. By the way, just saying. Yep. Yeah, you're right. I mean, like it took me what a day to download Battlefield. Mm, probably not that much. Like half a day to download Battlefield 4, and that's what 30, 40 gigabytes. I mean, this is 65 gigabytes, which wasn't unexpected. I mean, the game's massive. I played it on PlayStation. It's a massive game. So I think it's not even that big on PlayStation, though. It wasn't that big, actually. Although when it's on disc, it's not as big. I don't think. 
because you don't download the whole thing, do you? It's more of a kind of... Okay. Actually I'm done. <laughs> it, to be honest, yeah, it's kind of complicated. I think it downloads certain things. Yeah. But No, I think... I, I wasn't surprised it was going to be big, but... Um, yeah, I think definitely Rockstar opening up um, the pre-download is definitely good because, of course, then I don't have to come home from uh, school and spend the whole night until, like, 5 in the morning downloading it, which, yeah. of course, uh, isn't good. Um, so, yeah, I think that's definitely... I'm I'm wondering if they've re they don't normally release this so early. Mm. I don't think... I mean, I think the last one... Usually I it's a day early on Steam, I think. Yeah. Like, as a standard. I think Borderlands, the pre-sequel, was like literally a couple of days before, and for some reason this is like what, like three weeks? A week. A week. It's only a week till it comes out. Dude, it's the sixth. It's the English uh, today. Um, so in eight days, GTA Five is launching on PC. Holy shit! It doesn't feel like that long. I mean, it doesn't. Wow, that's come up really quick. Um, yes. But yeah. So this is obviously good. I'm wondering if um, Rockstar, it kind of um, tempts me even more not to pre-order it um, when they try and kind of sweeten the pot with things like this. Like yeah. Especially, I mean, if you just look at Rockstar's Twitter, they're constantly talking, I mean, about the money. I mean, I think... Releasing trailers and everything. Yeah. More money. <laughs> more money. Like, it's going to be, it's going to end, so, yeah. like, to the point that it's like, oh, if you pre-order it, you're going to get 12 million in-game spending money. But it's no good <laughs> if you pre-order it, and then you the game launches, and you can't use or even get on the game for, like, a month, because they haven't fixed it properly. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it does make me wonder why it took them so long to make this game, and why they keep delaying it. They have been trying to fix it a lot, uh, mm. and I actually think they are ready, since you can already pre-load. I just think they won't really release it before. Yeah. I mean, yeah, why the hell don't they, they do, um, they could, um, instead of um, delaying the release, they could bring it forward. I mean, wow, a company do that, that'd be just amazing. Uh, but you. they wouldn't do Innovative that. Innovative or something. Yeah, I, I think it's mainly to just see if they can catch some bugs uh, at last second. Yeah. But I think the game is actually ready now. Hopefully. Just hopefully, because obviously this will be a. It's going to be probably one of the biggest game launches in a while, uh, especially for PC. Yep. Like, I mean, ty to be honest, I mean, apart from that and Witcher 3, I think there's not that many other games that are going to be released this year that I'm actually looking forward to. Um, so, yeah. Um, I think GTA 5 is about the only game I'm looking forward to. Yeah, it's the only game I'm definitely getting. But. Anyway, yeah. I think we've kind of drained this topic. Um, is there anything else you want to add? Because I think we're running low on topics. <laughs> Not uh, really, to be honest. We are really good at ending the podcast, you know. <laughs> it's like, you. Know, we seem to have run out of topics. Bye. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the Talking Tech Podcast. Um, sorry we were a bit late this time. And sorry for my English. As always. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. <laughs> As always. Um, um, so, yeah, thank you guys for watching. I um, hope you enjoyed it. Like the video if you liked it. Disliked if you... No, um, that's Linus. Not doing that. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Not doing that. Thank you, guys. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. Bye. <laughs>